Hey friends, it's Drayton with World's Greatest Kiting. I am at Prism Kite Technology today. I'm going to take you inside and show you around, introduce you to who works at Prism, who the people, the faces are behind this awesome company. <laughs> I'm here with my friend Keegan Zanzi. You might have hey heard of him. So Keegan, what do you do for Prism Kite Technology? <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of a long list. We all do a lot of yeah. everything because there's just five of us. Yeah. But uh, if you call in for parts, if you need help with your kite, if you've got questions, you're probably talking to me when you call in. Or if you email us, that's all me. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And you, and you do the Facebook page and some other yep, things Facebook too. Facebook and Instagram. Yeah. Um, yeah, a lot of stuff. Well, why don't you take me on a tour and show everybody what's yeah. going on inside Prism. Come on in. Alright, so this is the front office and kind of the retail space we have set up in here. Um, it's pretty straightforward. We've got all our frame kites over here, Nexus, Quantum, all the big hitters, everybody's favorites. Uh, over here we've got all our parafoils, like the Synapse and the Tantrum. Um, and then over here is all our single line stuff with the new Zenith up top that we're showing off today. Um, you know, we got a little repair bench in here for all our walk-ins and all that kind of stuff. This is the office, this is where I sit all day answering emails and phone calls and telling me how to do stuff. <laughs> so if you ever talk to me on the phone, this is where I was if you were ever wondering. That's the phone. <laughs> That's, right there. This is the phone that I take all the calls on. This isn't the best room. Uh, no, no. This is a little bit more exciting back here. Uh, call this the showroom back here. This is where Mark's office is. Uh, Mark would be in this corner over here. Uh, but we use this room for kind of the parties we have here, the open houses, garage sale stuff we do. Um, it's just kind of a fun spot. We've got all the kites that we make up here and all the kites that we kind of ever did make. So how does it start? What's the, what's the um, order here? Well, yeah, so we've got a timeline that goes around the top of the room here. It starts with the radium, uh, which was the first kite Mark made for Prism. Uh, that was 1992. Um, people who own the Special Edition Quantum we did last year might recognize the color palette because that's kind of what we were going for. Yeah. Special Edition 25th Anniversary one. Um, and then, yeah, going around the room, you just start going through the years. There's more or less an order. Um, you know, Ion, um, we've got Eclipses, Total Eclipse, we've got Vapor up there, Alien, Prophecy, Illusion, we've got them all. Um, I think on our Facebook, if you check it out, we've got a pretty good 360 if you ever want to go in and do some good detail shots and kind of spy around this room. We've got that up there. Cool. I'll put a link to that in this video so yeah. people can see that. Uh, got our big old development pile of stuff over here that I'm not going to let you zoom in too well on that camera, yeah. but you'll hear about it <laughs> when it's ready. So our 3D printer we just got recently so we can start prototyping stuff like new little center tees and new little fittings. Yeah, so the final product. Yeah, it's kind of awesome the way this stuff works. It's nice to be able to design something and a couple hours later you have a working model of it you can take out and fly. Yeah. Yeah. So what goes on in this room back here behind you? Uh, well, we usually keep behind the curtain because this is where we do all our messy, uh, just making a mess as we try to figure so stuff out. So this is what a mess at Prism looks like, guys. Yeah. 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 But uh, yeah, over here, this is the computer that runs the 3D printer, so it's done doing all the modeling software and stuff over here. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's kind of a neat little, you know, there's our little center T we're testing. So you develop all your parts and pieces nowadays with this. Yeah, exactly. You know, uh, we make a lot of stuff that's really kind of on the pointy end of what you can do with aerodynamics of a kite, and that really involves being able to get in here and be like, well, I need that to be one millimeter different. Now I need to print it. Now I need to test it. And then I come yeah. back and change it by a millimeter again. So it's really handy. Keegan, one last question. Yeah. What is your favorite kite in this room? Ooh, in this room, I would say probably this alien up here, if you want to come up. Alien's definitely one of my favorite kites because up here in Seattle, we tend to either get no wind or 50 miles of it. And for everybody that knows, that Alien is a pretty sweet high wind kite. And this one's a total custom. Pull this off real quick. Probably won't ever see one of these out in the wild, but all mylar. I mean, this kite's gorgeous. And this thing, I mean, you fly it in 30, 40 miles an hour of wind and it feels like nothing in your hands, which is pretty amazing. But yeah, I would say that's my favorite. That, or maybe this guy over here, that black and white vapor. The vapor. This is one. this the same vapor that's in the photo downstairs in the hallway? Ooh, I don't know. I don't know. There have been a number over the years, but this thing's, 
about as sexy as a kite can get. <laughs> that is a pretty sexy kite. Yeah, and it's just so technical. I mean, like these these clear panels. That material is about one sixth the thickness of a human hair. Wow. That's how lightweight that is. You can see the shimmer. Yeah, this one's pretty pristine. I don't even know if this one's been flown. Well, Keegan, thanks a lot for showing us around. Yeah. The one of the coolest rooms I think that exists on the planet. <laughs> of Earth. And I'm, I'm going to agree with you on one thing. Well, a lot of things. One is my favorite kite is this, this vapor that too. That vapor? Yeah. yeah that, that's my favorite one in the room. Yeah. So thanks a lot. Friends, I'm here with Alex, and if you've gotten anything shipped to you, it's passed through Alex first. So, Alex, t take me on a tour here. Show me what what's it look like. People order a kite. What happens from from the time it gets here to the time it gets to them out there? Yeah, sounds yeah. good. Cool. Uh, whenever we get our orders, they come straight to me to my desk here, and then. Once I get your shipping label, we come out and we start picking your order from our warehouse. We keep all our kites back here. Um, most of our kites come to us from our manufacturers from China, and then we ship them out from our doors. So all your kites are held in this area. We have all our two-line kites, all our three-line kites, all that kind of stuff, our sports kites. We keep all our stock here on this side of the warehouse. Um, we try to keep our best inventory, so we, we always have a kite on hand if you need it. Uh, we keep all of our newer kites here. We're just getting into our Zenith 5. That's coming up on our website soon. It's gonna be a really great new kite. Um, back here we have our part making areas, like we have our sewing room, fabric area, and we have our wood shop back here too. Uh, we have all our parts department right here. If you have any replacement needs and stuff like that, this is where we get our parts for you. Uh, any bridles, kite repair kits, anything like that, we have them all here for the ready. Um, I think there's maybe two kites we don't have parts for, but other than that, we have everything back to like our 1998 kind of kites. Wow. So we have every part imaginable that you could think of. Wow. Yeah. Pretty nice warehouse you work in here, Alex. Yeah, it's, it's very nice. Yeah. Alex, anything you want to say to world's greatest kiting out there, all of them? Just hope that you guys buy our kites and enjoy them and have fun out there. Thanks, Thanks Alex. Yeah, thank you. So this is my friend Justin, Justin Edwards. Yes, that is me. Justin, what do you do for Prism? Uh, I'm a product manager and uh, assist in product design with Mark. Right on, so we're in the right place. He's going to show us around the shop and some parts of the PRISM World Headquarters here. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look. So what you see in here, a lot of this is not what you would typically think that one would build kites with. But sometimes when you need to make kites, you need to make a lot of them. Maybe you need to make a tool or a jig, or maybe you need to head off to a trade show to show it off. So a lot of what's in here is just kind of standard woodworking, metalworking tools that we would build jigs, boots, fixtures, something you might see in a store that would hold kites. That kind of thing. Yeah. Kind of metal zone here. The metal zone. Yeah. A lot of bits and pieces and parts and scraps to make things. Center tees, new fittings, different ideas. Able to try it all right here. You got a lathe factory. Machine it down, turn it, machine it. Bridge port. Many possibilities with that. So this is a room where we do most of our prototyping. So we've got four sewing machines, cut table, do layups here, got a whole rod storage and parts, rod fittings, that kind of stuff. So anything that we make usually starts its life in here. Right yeah. on. How many kites have been made on this table or cut out on this table? This thing is old. Because uh, before it was this, this was the bed for our laser cutter back at the old shop. So like, two, let's see, 98 or so until um, now. So 20 years of kites made here. Huh. Um, 
all of all of the Seattle shop kites were cut on this table. Wow. So, yeah. So all those vintage aliens and vapors and elixirs and prophecies. So if you have a prism kite, it was probably. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Never thought about that. Yeah. And here is uh, yeah, kind of all the different rods, uh, fiberglass. Carbon hybrid, all sizes and types, varieties. We're actually reorganizing it right now, but uh, I like your storage yeah. technique here. It's very cool. These were uh, printed on the 3D printer. Oh, cool. And then these are uh, just PVC cut down. So, Justin, tell me about the sewing machines that you use here. Okay, uh, so we have four sewing machines here, three are globals, which are typically used in the sailing industry. And what that does, it's called a three-step stitch. And that is like the quintessential kite stitch. And I can show you here. So this is a 4D. So the three-step is this flat stitch and it has a, it's really strong on the, the bias and it reinforces the seam tape holds it down really well. So you got a three-step stitch, uh, straight stitching and zigzag are all performed uh, on this bath over here. It's kind of a rock solid machine. Uh, and that's, that's like what we use a ton now for prototyping. Just any basic sewing, anything that needs to happen typically is there. So cool. Three-step is pretty specialized. And in that too, each of these is set up for a different kind of three-step. So, here you're doing all your flat stitching, uh, any, any kind of stale stuff, sewing panels together that have been taped up. And then here you're doing your trailing edge, any small binding tapes uh, that go on with a folder. And then this one on the end is doing leading edge tapes, so pre-folded, heavier gauge, uh, leading edge tape that would be then sewn on. But again, still all done with that three-step stitch. Very cool. Yeah, a zero G uh, tuning jig. So there's oh, cool. one here, and there's one at the factory in China, and they are identical. Very so interesting. So if we ever have to reset a zero G or do any changes, um, that's what we use. Thanks, Justin, for yeah, the tour. Yeah, no from of course. Right on. Yeah. Time to go fly some kites now. I think. Yeah, yeah. you said that already. I Let's did. do it. Dang it. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this tour of Prism Kites. There's more to come on the next video. Until then, happy flying.